This video is going to look at the new features and changes that have come with the Among the Ancients update. This is one of the biggest updates to date and brings in many new features, items and playstyles into the game. As a note, Barra Trauma is still in early access and everything is subject to modification and change. There are five big features that we're going to be covering in this video, including the new status monitors, character progression, visual overhaul, the alien ruins, and some of the new items. First off, let's talk about the new status monitors. These have been upgraded with a more realistic view of the ship, along with three new tabs. The first tab is the general status view. This gives you oxygen status, water levels, door status, and the ability to drag and drop issue callouts to different compartments of the ship. In addition to this, you also get the hull status to indicate which parts of the ship have been damaged and require repair. The second tab is an electrical status monitor. This gives you the location of all electrical devices that are currently receiving power. All the devices display their current durability. Additionally, for the batteries, it displays their charge and for the junction boxes, it displays their electrical load and current. The final tab is a much welcome change to the game, a search monitor. You can type in specific items you're looking for or select them from a drop down list. The monitor will ping the locations of where the items can be found on the ship. Next on the update, we're going to look at the health user interface. This is now a smaller view to the right hand side of the screen. It has a larger view of the body, a clearer indication of limb specific afflictions, as well as an indication of suitable treatments at the bottom. For the suitable treatment section, you will only receive notifications of which treatments are available only if you have the required skill level to be able to treat that affliction. This is a great quality of life feature as medics can now heal players faster whilst being able to see what's going on. If you want to know more about medical afflictions and healing in the game, you can also check out my video on the medics guide in the top right hand of the screen. Next, we're going to look at talent trees. This is a major overhaul of the game and provides more strategical gameplay by adding unique statistics, items and abilities. Each character now has a talent tree where you're able to spend talent points. These add bonuses to your character progression in the game. There are currently three trees for each character role and each tree provides bonuses that define the type of gameplay that suits your character. You are able to mix and match these trees and the more you level your character, the more utility they will have. Talent points are gained by completing missions and performing certain actions that can be unlocked with different skills. Taking a closer look at each role, here is the breakdown of what you can achieve. I will leave out specifics so you can explore yourself and just give you an overview of each. For the captain role, the three trees where you can spend points are Gunslinger, Skipper and Shipmaster. The Gunslinger role provides bonuses to the combat elements of the game, the Skipper provides bonuses to the navigation of the ship, and the Shipmaster gives overall bonuses to your ship and its crew. For the Electrical Engineer, the three are Weapons Engineer, Electrician and Physicist. The Weapons Engineer giving you access to better nuclear ammunition and recycle options for spent fuel rods, the Electrician giving you bonus to craftable items and repair skills, and finally, the physicist giving you access to better craftable items in the game. For the mechanical engineer, you will get access to the machinist, technician, and pioneer. The machinist will give you access to bonuses for your submarine to increase its speed and reduce production times. For the technician, it will give you access to bonuses and items that work best in emergency situations. And finally, for the pioneer, you get bonuses specific to mining and salvaging. For the security officer, the three specs are Specialist, Warden and Soldier. The Specialist will be giving you bonuses to operating outside the submarine. The Warden will give you bonuses to everything in general, plus a very special new mechanic for rewarding you for live enemy prisoners. So make sure to stock up on those stun darts and handcuffs as they will come in handy. The Soldier is the final tree that will give you buffs for killing enemies and attacking monsters, as well as access to some of the most advanced hand weapons 
in the game. For the medic, you get access to the xenologist, medic, and scientist. For the xenologist tree, you will get bonuses that are specific to finding, researching, and refining everything alien. For the medic tree, you get bonuses to healing and saving crewmates. And for the scientist tree, you will get bonuses to the new gene slicing mechanic in the game. Finally, for the assistant, the three trees are jack of all trades, gray shirt, and clown. The jack of all trades allows you to gain skills faster and go beyond what is normally achievable in the game. The gray shirt tree will add bonuses to playing and dying. And finally, the clown tree, praise the honk mother, finally sees the clowns becoming a ridiculous bard slash melee fighter with some incredible equipment unlocks and upgrades. These particular trees see the assistant turn from a cheap labor into possibly one of the strongest classes in the game. There is so much to explore with the talent tree system and so many new items and bonuses with rewards, it really provides Barra Trauma with so much extra depth and uniqueness. It will take a long time to explore and go through each character, their new fighting skills, and what bonuses work best for different missions in the game. This update also sees a huge change to the art, with the ability to fully customize and design your own characters. When you start off a new game, you will be able to access the character design screen, and from here you can randomize or customize all of your characters and how they look. The combinations allow for a vast creative set with many different possible outcomes. In addition to the character customization, all the uniforms and armor have also been updated. The uniforms look more 3D and have a lot more shadow and depth that hides the 2D joints and flatness of the designs very well. Next is a small but welcome update, ship upgrades. Ship upgrades from vendors at stations have been modified to make it more streamlined and easier to upgrade your ship. The main change is to mechanical and electrical systems. Before, you had to upgrade the durability, repair speed, and level difficulty decrease for each system. This has now been taken out of individual systems and now applies to all systems that are either electrical or mechanical. All upgrades also now display the percentage modifier of each upgrade, giving you a better informed choice of the value of each upgrade. Next, we're going to talk about the Alien Ruins overhaul. The developers have had it in their long-term plans for some time to provide a more varied, challenging, and complex Alien Ruins experience. They have been overhauled not with just new features, but the entire design and structure has been changed. It's now even hard to spot on the radar as they just look like large rock formations. Before the update, there were guardians, electrical traps, and turrets. These would try and slow you down and kill you when you entered the ruins. The ruins have now been converted into more of a puzzle experience where in addition to new traps and monsters, there are now door configurations and items that need to be put in place to operate. The monsters in the ruin have also seen an overhaul as well. The new guardian monsters are probably some of the toughest monsters in the game. This is because they are the first mob that can now heal themselves. To do this, they can take shelter in the various guardian chambers throughout the ruins. They also have a harpoon that drags your character around like a ragdoll. Make sure to bring four times more firepower than usual, as well as plenty of blood packs to survive the encounter. On top of everything else, the developers have also snuck in some new missions. Cargo missions have received a mini overhaul with a prisoner transport, stowaway, terrorist stakeout, and VIP missions added. Among Us PvE is now real. The new ruins also sees two new ruin specific missions. One is to scan a room inside the ruins, and another is to kill a fractal guardian. This brings the mission count for the ruins up to three, and provides so much more incentive to explore one with much more loot and danger. Finally on this video, I'm going to cover some of the new items in the game. However, there is in fact an entirely new item system that has almost reworked most of the items in the game. Most usable items in the game now have a tier level associated with them. There are currently four, and this ranges from normal to masterwork. This is indicated in the inventory system by an additional green, blue, blue or purple glow on the border of an image item. Each higher item gives you additional stats 
stats for longer life or better operation. To get better quality items, you also have to have a high level in the crafting area the item is contained in. For example, to get the masterwork item welders that repair 30% faster, you will need to have 100 mechanical engineering skill level and additional buffs from clothings that go beyond it. There are also certain character perks that will guarantee you craft a higher level item that can be unlocked from the different character skill trees. This adds an entire upgrade system to your items and makes each character's inventory more unique and valuable. For weapons, we also see a new ammo type for the coil gun, the depleted fuel coil gun ammunition. This will add radiation to a target upon successful hit. I can see this being a great multiplayer PvP ammunition where you rip into an enemy ship or against pirates when you need more time to take them out. Next, we have a new scooter in the game, the cargo scooter. This is one of the popular items from the modding community that seems to have made its way over into the game. The new scooter will allow you to have an additional 12 slot carry items. This is a huge bonus to mining and salvage missions, and the only real disadvantage is you can't put this in your inventory. So if you need to fight, you will have to drop it. Moving on from that, we have the repair pack. This is a single use item that will repair a damage system much faster than a wrench or screwdriver. This will be great on beacon station missions and in emergency situations where you need to be quick with your repairing. Up next is one of my new favorite items in the game, thermal goggles. This is a great input to the game as it allows you to detect heat signatures through the walls. This is a game changer for abandoned outposts, pirate missions and wrecks where you can detect hidden dangers through the doors and walls. Beyond its functionality, it just looks so cool. Next, we have another great item that is a must have when doing alien artifact missions, the artifact transport case. It blocks all the negative effects from alien artifacts, making them safe to transport and bring on board. No longer will you need to keep your airlock flooded to stop bad things happening to your ship. There is also a new item to quickly increase your skills in all areas. The Sailor's Guide when read will considerably add it to your skills, giving you a massive jump in the amount of things you can craft and the quality of those items. There are also other books specific to individual skills that can be acquired through skill tree bonuses. Finally, for the items, I want to talk about the new gene slicing mechanic. This allows you to take genetic material from monsters and actually inject it into yourself. You you will need to find raw genetic material from wrecks, ruins and monsters. You will then need stabilizine to refine it at the research bench from stations. From there, based on the material, you will get different bonuses. You can then combine materials together to become stronger. And finally, use the new gene slicing tool to insert that material into your body. But be warned, there are side effects. There are so many new items in this game, this video would be 40 minutes long if I explained them all. So instead, I hope I've covered the main ones that add so much more randomization and quality of life. If you want to check them all out, they will be under the new fabricator section that requires recipes. As mentioned, these these can be acquired from the talent tree section. Hopefully this guide gives you everything you need to know about the new update and how the different features can be used in the game. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and which one was your favorite. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like as it will reach more people if you do. If you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and until next time, peace. Na, na, na.